Hey folks, it's Marvin Cash, the host of the Articulate Fly, and we're back with another East Tennessee Fishing Report with Ellis Ward. Ellis, how are you? I am good, Marvin. How are you? As always, just trying to stay out of trouble, and you are not in East Tennessee. No, I'm not. I've been up in northern Michigan for a couple days now, and the weather is, it was a low of 41 two nights ago um but pretty cool to be up here i've I've been coming up here and this is where you know a a big chunk of my early fishing and which really looked like trolling rapalas in in some of the shallows for smallmouth and rock bass um but it's it's fun being up here with my mom who taught me how to fish back in the day and uh going through some of my my grandpa's old tackle and um taking my daughter out she wants a tackle box and it's like well you, you got to go out and fish in order to get a tackle box so we're gonna go out here i think later this afternoon when it warms up a little bit but cool to see some hexes there's you know those tailwaters get me excited about a big bug being you know size 14 and there's size fours rolling around here and i'm on the lake it's not even necessarily a trout stream but every piece of water here is so fishy there's there's musky pike smallmouth um you know atlantic salmon trout of of different variety and um they're they're kind of all over the place but to be up here and not like i'm taking a break from fishing too much but um always always nice to get a change of pace yeah i would expect nothing less you know and it's an amazing thing i mean particularly once you kind of get like north of ann arbor and grand rapids i mean you know the lakes are fishy but like all that fishy water up up north even before you get to the up and michigan is pretty amazing yeah it's all when i got here it was you know, it's 80 degrees. It's, um, I guess 85, sunny, late June. Jump in the lake and it, it takes your breath away. It is, it's low 60 degrees and it's just all fed from these glacial springs and everything is highly oxygenated and clean and right it's 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 fishy um there's these little little blue line no name streams that are spitting out or i like to call the the hex floating hot dogs they're they just they relative to a a fish that would eat them it's it's like they're looking at a, a foot long sub floating on the water and and that's just happening all around us um so it's it's amazing. You look in the paper, there's 50 inch musky caught. Um, there, I got a couple spots in some connecting little lakes and, and rivers that, that typically produce some decent, some fun size pike. Um, but yeah, the, the whole place is, is fishy and, um, good to come up here with really anything. I didn't bring. I brought an 11 weight, but I've accumulated so much stuff out here that sort of the same deal in in Tennessee where I go out and it's like, I could be throwing stuff with, uh, you know, throwing dry flies with a five weight or or throwing musky flies with an 11 weight or, or chucking gear or doing whatever. Uh, Very, very neat. And you were telling me you got to spend some time with your godfather, Tommy Lynch. (laughs) Yeah. Um, he couldn't believe it had been four years since we fished together, but it's, you know, I, I try to bother him a little bit and, and chat on the phone every once in a while. He's been, he's been a really, um, influential person in my tying and, and guiding career. And it hasn't all been direct, but just seeing, seen his thought process on on how the drunk and disorderly was tied which you know he's most famous for which to date um 
I've, I haven't thrown a streamer with him. And it's, it's that, the, this mentality of, you know, what is, what does the angler sort of want to do? What are the options? And, and here's what we're going to do given the conditions and, you know, this, this constantly changing algorithm of flows and, and water temps and, um, just what, what the river is, is giving us that I, I didn't necessarily see an, an attempt to emulate, but um, it, it is so true to how I fish and how I guide and just going into to the tailwaters and starting my own business and, and fishing without regard for what was, quote unquote, the good runs or the right thing to do or the right flows or, you know, is this is this section even rowable or fishable at night? Do people even do this? Um, I didn't know anyone and I just, I figured everything out. And, and so it, that knowledge lent itself to how I guide, which is, you know, here, here's all of these options and let's whittle it down to, to what we want to do with any given set of experiences and, and time constraints and all that. So, um, you know, going, going out with Tommy, it was just another another display of this um he he wants to go out and fish in a way that's that's fun and he's of course clarifying that with me and and he knows me pretty well and has some confidence in my ability to do certain things but he's also just as soon as we're getting on the boat it's it's what's next it's not you know good good boy you you can cast it's all right well let's let's get to the next thing and um it's it's pretty technical fishing and um i i ended up we we got one one fish in the boat i was shaking off fish that were you know under under 10 inches but but plenty of nice wild brown trout eating a very big dry fly it's um a big golden stone that and 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 he was happier for it because we didn't have to stop and use the net and we could keep fishing um but had another brown that was probably low 20s um ab absolutely god they, they eat this thing the, the stonefly like they eat mice um had him on and he just he he took my lunch money man went went down shook his head went the other way i was pulling the wrong way flies out and then had uh had a special fish that that had Tommy making noises for the rest of the evening um I didn't get steel in him, but it's you know we we bypassed countless little risers that we could have had on on iso mergers or or bluing mergers and um Fishing that golden stone, we, you know, I, I would, I would see him. It's very active. It's very engaged. It's, um, it, it's all the type of fishing that is exciting about streamer fishing and and mousing and, um, the the visual reward and and challenges of, you know, there's logs coming in left and right. It's it's almost entirely long roll casts, and um, he is where he is with casting and and manipulation of line and, and rod is, I think, something that people until you're on the boat with him, you, you just think of you associate his name with the drunken disorderly. Um, I, I'm I can't express this enough. We we've talked about it a handful of times, not while fishing together. It's uh, almost all conversation that we have is, you know, him giving me some insight on guiding, um, you know, j joking about this and that, and then a lot of it's casting, and and a lot of that is is dry fly casting, and um, so it was it was great to spend time with them and and sort of get get the download 
from the last couple of years from him and, and give him a little bit from from my life from the tailwater scene and um finished with a, a little darkness and, and got a couple mouse eats. Uh but then that that night was the the forty one degree plunge and, and things kind of shut off. Then we got to a section and a, a motion light went on and um I was in the front of the boat shaking. I didn't come up here to, um, I didn't have gear for 41 degrees. So, uh, we called it and I mean, I couldn't have been happier to get out with them, get some shots on, on some really nice fish and just see and also listen to someone who, who, who has an understanding and a passion for, I have a hard time saying guiding. It's if you say guiding to so many people, it means what a lot of people experience is, as guided fishing trips, um, which I, I could reasonably qualify as, a, as as ecotourism or something like that. Like, Tommy's a guide. He's a casting coach. Um, he loves fishing, and you know, I I get this with hanging with um matt riley and and a couple of my buddies in, in jonathan city it's just fun spending time with someone who who approaches this this industry their job um this sport in in a similar way and and even cooler to see someone who's who's still just pushing it at at 20 something years into the game yeah it's interesting right because you know you see those people and they have that kind of you know, passion and drive to perform that you see in elite performers, you know, like whether it was like what I saw you saw in consulting or I saw in like the law and the finance world. And it's kind of mind boggling. And I think, you know, uh, you know, for folks that haven't been able to spend time with Tommy, if you go watch some of his tying videos that he's done, there's a fly shop in Michigan that he likes to tie at. Um, and you listen to him talk. It reminds me a lot of like listening to Blaine talk, like the thoughtfulness into presentation term related terminal tackle um it's a completely you know to your point it's a little bit different than like you know let me adjust your indicator right yeah and i i think that what yeah like like you said just just watching someone who you, you don't get to with your own name and, and not working for an outfitter or or partnering with these major companies you just you don't get to cruising altitude and stay there for as long as he has without on a day-to-day basis working i mean I, i took pictures of the inside of this boat um everything's tuned up there's a process for everything um man when i get him going talking about one thing or another it's 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 full tilt in whatever direction that we're going and um right you just it, it's it's a different approach that you don't see outside of you know the 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 handful of people that are are at the top and and have been at the top and you know one of the, one of the cool parts that i appreciate and definitely respect about Tommy is he's I don't think anyone would know any uh, anything about some of this stuff there's yeah there's the tying videos that um you, you can see some of the passion some of the knowledge man you get in that boat for just 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 the first hour and if you don't pause him every once in a while if you just take in all of it your head's going to start to spin because he will keep going and and you're just going to continue to absorb information that um that, he, that he's happy to provide but it's it's almost like well i can use it very appropriately a consulting phrase of, of drinking out of a fire hose where even if you're just talking about roll casting a non-tapered line um he's he's going to press that to a different using the rod and line and, and just discussing all of it in such a different way that yields a presentation that also 
encourages a, a a proper hook set with a specific leader that can fight big fish and some of these, you know, down seeders and, um, you know, it, it avoids hang ups and like all of it. I, I do a little bit of it with streamer casting. You know, you want the tip in the water, these strip strip kills and everything is to promote or encourage the next thing. And all of that is about getting a good hook set and boating a fish. So to watch that happening with, um, I don't know, all these different variables and, and this this complex system that I know is only one of his things is it's it's just fascinating and, um, yeah, I, I don't know if there's I don't know if I've seen you, you hear a little bit of it with Blaine. I've I've seen it with Larry. Um, and these guys all know each other. There, there's no surprise. So um, it, it it makes sense that that they do know each other and, and have spent some time together. Um, but yeah, always it, it's fun talking with them. I'll, I'll call them every once in a while. But but to spend eight hours in the boat and and really hang for a little bit was very cool. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, folks, we love questions at the Articulate Fly. You can email them to us or DM us on social media. And we've just added a little record button uh, on the podcast page of the website. If you actually go there, you can record your question. You may actually hear yourself on a on an episode. And if we use your question, I will send you some Articulate Fly swag. And we're uh, drawing for some cool stuff from Ellis at the end of the season. And uh, you know, I know you know after the fourth, you're going to be heading back down to the. Uh, not Lowe's in the 41 Johnson City, uh, to uh, to guide back on the South Holston and the Wittog. You want to let folks know how they can reach out and get on your guidebooks, Ellis? Yeah. Um, best way to contact me, ask about trips, anything like that, is my cell phone at 513-543-0019. Instagram is at Ellis Ward Guides and uh, website, which is somewhat updated on a rolling basis um kind of give you some information about what types of trips and and the things that i'm doing at at whatever time of year you're looking at is at elliswardflies.com and um just a little plug for for the summer we got um dry fly fishing and and mousing with streamer fishing mixed in condition dependent is it's going to be rolling full steam here for the next month or two and uh, hopefully transition a little bit into more mousing. And um, and then all of a sudden we'll be looking at, at musky fishing. So um, lots of stuff going on and excited to, to get folks on the boat. Yeah, well, there you go. Well, listen, folks, I want to wish everyone a safe and happy 4th of July and you owe it yourself to get out there and catch a few. Tight lines, everybody. Tight lines, Ellis. Appreciate it, Marth.